Working on Vietnam, Cambodia, Indochina, Southeast Asia, in my role as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State between 1990 and 1994, uh, I had the opportunity in the first two years of uh, that term to work uh, closely with Secretary of State Jim Baker. I had worked with George Shultz, Republican Secretary of State in the Reagan administration, and now in the Bush 41 administration, I'd have the chance to work with another individual for whom I have utmost respect and considered one of the very, very best secretaries of state ever, Jim Baker. Like Schultz, he was a former Marine, was a graduate of Princeton University where my two sons went to study, but he was brilliant and very, very able negotiator. And he had two individuals working closely with him, uh, the counselor of the State Department, Robert Zellick, and the Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Bob Kimmett. And together with them and my boss, Assistant Secretary Dick Solomon, we came up with the policy, develop the roadmap policy. Secretary Baker had said, we need to be able to tell both the participants in the Cambodian negotiation and the leadership in the Vietnamese government in Hanoi, which it was believed had significant influence on Cambodia, we had to show them that we understood that we had a roadmap, a way to get to what we believe to be the goals that both sides aspired to. We wanted to establish diplomatic relations between the U.S. and Vietnam. We wanted to establish and open up economic and trading opportunities for Vietnam that were being held back by U.S. and by our allies. They wanted that. We wanted POWMIA accounting. We wanted Cambodia, which had suffered so much, to have a political process that could bring a new government that could unite people, end this long civil war that had raged for 15 years or more, end the suffering of the Cambodian people. And so we had a step-by-step -step process. We brought the Vietnamese foreign minister to Washington, D.C. Never happened before. I went, his name was Win Kotak, and I went to uh, meet him at National Airport, drove the car out on the tarmac, uh, and uh, as he came off the plane, welcomed him. He and I are riding into Washington, D.C. Here's a moment. The, the U.S. had negotiated in Paris. Henry Kissinger had negotiated in Paris with the North Vietnamese government, the government in Hanoi, but never had the foreign minister of a senior official of Hanoi, come to the United States, come to Washington, D.C. As we're driving past the Vietnam Memorial, and I pointed it out to the foreign minister, and he said, can I go, can I visit? And I said, oh, you know, it's not, it's not time when that can happen yet. He was so interested. And as we uh, met with him, we laid out the roadmap policy. Assistant Secretary Solomon, I was there with him. Here is what the U.S. sees as the way forward. We'll take some initial steps. You'll uh, make available to us opportunities for POW MIA searches in Vietnam, for our teams to be able to fly in and go out to crash sites where we knew U.S. Air Force or Navy planes had crashed go out where we had reports that American servicemen had been shot, were on the battlefield. Let us excavate and dig there. Can we find their remains? Bring anything home to put their families at ease and at rest. And at the same time, then, we could take steps, small steps at first. We could make some humanitarian aid available to, uh, to Vietnam. 
we could begin to take some steps towards uh, increasing uh, diplomatic contacts. I did something no one had ever done. I sent three foreign service officers to work in Hanoi without an embassy, without any diplomatic protections. And Vietnam sent Le Bang, who would later be the ambassador to Washington, D.C., just having officials there in the country to work with. So we had now put this roadmap in place. Uh, the Vietnamese, the foreign minister, didn't say, yes, I accept it, but he took it away and he understood that we were serious, that we had a way that we could uh, do things together. Here was a way. We'll do some things. You do some things. We don't have to publicly say we're demanding it. You don't have to publicly say you're doing what the Americans want. You'll understand privately from us what it is that we are looking to have happen, what we need, and we will do things on our side without you demanding them of us, and we'll make it possible for our two sides, our two capitals, to take these steps, small steps, small steps, but then where we can get to the next level of the roadmap, and then the final level of the roadmap the establishment, establishment of diplomatic relations, regularizing relationships with Vietnam, having a new government in Cambodia created by free democratic elections with all parties participating and ensuring, though, that the Khmer Rouge, the worst genocidal mass murderers of the second half of the 20th century can never, ever, ever return to power.